Hey guys, it's Infinity, coming at you again with another video. Today I wanted to discuss something that I'd already been asked to kind of go over, or that people said they kind of wanted to hear me talk about, and it's something that I was already considering doing, but honestly at this point, it, I might as well talk about it. It's Bethesda. So, what's been going on with Bethesda the last couple months, if not years? <laughs> um... It's been a very interesting ride if you've been around as long as I have. I've kind of been around long enough to see kind of the cracks and the not so friendly, not so consumer friendly side of Bethesda, I suppose you could say. And a lot of people are probably expecting me to dig into Bethesda like I have some sort of hatred against them, like they took my firstborn. I have to, I have to like rip into them and tear them apart. No, I, I don't. I don't. And there's a very simple reason for it. I like them. I think they're my favorite gaming company out there. They are, for sure, the one company I think I've given the most money to when it comes to gaming. Mostly because I think I've bought Skyrim like three different times. And I also own every Elder Scrolls game and every Fallout game. And I even buy like, you know, Dishonored and I bought Prey and... I don't know, I just, I have so many games that they have their hands on right now. And as a publisher, they pr they publish good games. As a developer, they develop good games. And I think a lot of people tend to look at the bad side of those games, because it's a very simple, I have a very simple mentality when it comes to Bethesda games. There are no bad Bethesda games. That's right, I'm, I'm sure everybody in the comments is going to be like, Oh! You're a fanboy? No. Okay, well, mate, I don't know. I won't go down with the ship if they do something terrible. I just... And I recognize that they've made terrible, terrible business decisions. Look at the wasted potential that is Creation Club. Look at the dumb nonsense that was Horse Armor all those years ago. Look at... I don't know. The recent release of Fallout 76. I mean, they have made some pretty dumb decisions in the last couple of years, if not the last decade. It's it's not like I'm not willing to acknowledge that they've had very bad moments, very big failures, but I don't think that's the highlight of what I know them for. And I think the only reason people are so gung-ho about that right now is that they just it's just that they're in a bad spot at the moment, and that give them enough time and they'll bounce back to what they always have been, and that's a good developer. Now what do I mean by good developer? Well, what I said earlier, not that long ago, was that there are no bad Bethesda games. Now that's subjective, that's my take on it, but I'll explain what I mean so you can understand why I think that way. I think that there are bad aspects to a lot of Bethesda games, but overall, I don't think I've ever bought a Bethesda game and ever been like, this was a waste of my money. The closest that I've ever had was Fallout 76. And I still don't feel like I wasted my money. The game is still technically... I guess you could say it still technically has life. There's still a chance for it to kind of like improve. And I already spent, I think, a total of 80 to 100 hours on the game and that more than makes up for the money I spent on it. Mind you, I know some people don't have a lot of money, and they probably wasted the game they could get for the month on Fallout 76, and if that's the case, then I'm not going to argue with you. If you didn't like your purchase, there is nothing wrong with that. You made a purchase that you didn't like, and I'm sorry that you did not enjoy the game. I, was, I would hope that you would have liked it at that point. But there is no bad Bethesda game besides Fallout 76. Mind you, there are games like Redfall and Battlespire, but even they have their good aspects to them. Battlespire being one of the weaker versions, but Redfall at least had a really good story. Arena was an interesting story in and of itself with a very expanded world. Uh, Daggerfall was very, I suppose you could say, character-centric, very lively with its whole environment and how it made you feel like you were living in Tamriel. And I mean, yeah, there were, there were aspects that were bad of both games, for example, in Arena, the combat, the graphics, the movement, it's all very clunky, but that was just the DOS era. There wasn't a lot when it came to lore and very, you know, there wasn't really a lot when it came to side quests. There were some side quests that were fun, but they were randomly generated. They weren't really that well done, they were just okay. The, the whole point was the story. It was about the story and the world. Daggerfall was 
about, again, the character, the setting, the towns, Daggerfall, the Iliac Bay. And the only bad aspect to that was the fact that they kind of had the quests, as we say, on a timer, so you feel like you had to run around. Like, I'm currently playing through Daggerfall, and the hardest part is that and the dungeons. The dungeons are terrible. I'm having a lot of fun playing the game, but it's so, it tests my patience having to go through these dungeons that you can't even look at the map for because the map's so complicated. But the game itself is just so good because it makes you feel like you're actually living in Tamriel and that's like just the best part and I spent so many hours just playing into it. Getting lost, wanting to do side quests, joining guilds. It was a good game, I didn't even have to pay for it, it was free. It's free on Bethesda's website. Morrowind's amazing. I may not like its gameplay, like I think the, the worst part about Morrowind is its combat. But everything else, it's magic system, I think it's story, it's character models, it's graphics for the time, they were all really well done, really good. It's a fan favorite game for a reason. It's just, that's a that's a classic right there, Morrowind. And then we get into Oblivion, and Oblivion was just good with its story. It got a lot of very famous actors, it tried to be innovative. That's, that's another thing I think Bethesda always seems to do. They don't like to sit still, and I won't get off topic, I'm going to get back to what I was talking about in a second, but every game you'll notice that they have innovated or changed an aspect of the game in some way, whether it's a small base mechanic, or whether they're adding new features into the game. For example, in Oblivion, like I was just saying, everybody was voice acted. Everybody! In previous Elder Scrolls games like Morrowind, only some voice acting was done. Most of it was through text. Moving into Oblivion, they decided to voice everybody, and you can see that people have the same voice and stuff every now and then that the voice actors are very limited compared to most major games like that and that's probably one of the weaker points of oblivion was that and uh i oh yeah the graphics that's how that's what i'm thinking of the graphics were kind of uh, people looked like they were made out of clay um yeah those are probably the only two things i disliked about oblivion and i always overlooked them because oblivion was fun the magic system was awesome i think the combat was pretty good compared to previous games and i think it moving into the third dimensional kind of field that they were going into after morrowind the movement speed was increased the combat felt like it was more strategic with having to block and stuff and using spells to kind of i suppose you could say add kind of a spice to the combat like an add-on to it, that was a good feature. Oblivion's a good game. Skyrim, everybody, everybody's like split about Skyrim. Everyone's either like, ooh, Skyrim is the best game ever, or Skyrim is the worst Elder Scrolls game ever, and I don't know. If you dislike Skyrim, I'm sorry, but I, I don't understand why people dislike Skyrim so much in the Bethesda community. I think it's because they hold on to aspects of older games, and then they compare them to the newer games which are streamlined and supposed to be made to be fun. People forget that they're, that well they're video games, they're meant to be enjoyed, they're meant to be played away on and for newer generations every time. Yeah sure there's stuff in there for the old fans, I mean look at Dragonborn. That was like a whole love letter to people who loved Morrowind and loved the Solstheim and all that. The Solstheim. You know what I mean. They loved Solstheim that loved the Blood Moon DLC from Morrowind. It, the classic music was there, they had a lot of old creatures, a lot of old characters made reappearances. They had the Telvanni wizard and all that, and the tree. It was just... It's not like Bethesda just doesn't think about this stuff moving forward. But like I was saying, Skyrim is good. It's got some bad aspects to it where it, compared to most other RPGs, doesn't have a lot of numbers and it doesn't have a lot of stats and points like charisma and all that. And you can be a jack of all trades instead of picking a class and rolling with it like you should. But that's the thing though, like I said earlier, they're always trying to innovate, they're trying to be new, they're always trying to add new features to mix up the formula so they're not doing the same thing year after year. And that's respectable. As for the Fallout franchise, if you want to hear what I think Bethesda does wrong about the Fallout franchise, there's a video I made on the topic. Uh, the basic summary of it is I think they're really good when it comes to gameplay, and they're very bad when it comes to story. Um, and I think at the end of the day, that's really the only problem they have with Fallout, because they always try to innovate with Fallout. I think the things that they add into the Fallout franchise are amazing. You go from Fallout 1 to Fallout 2, it's not much of a difference, it's the same top-down 
uh, turn-based combat where they had the really cool 3D models when you talk to certain people and you could basically move across the map as though there were squares and stuff on it. But it was, you know, the same. Fallout 1 to Fallout 2 wasn't that much difference. Uh, Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, I think, was the one game that decided to go out of the comfort zone. And it was just a mess of 90s and early 2000s. Just edgy being, we're cool with explosions and nonsense. Seriously, look, look up the trailer. But there wasn't much innovation from Black Isle. They tried to do Van Buren, which would be the third game, but you could see from the previews and the demo and all that that there really wasn't much of a change moving forward. I think what Bethesda did with the Fallout franchise was, I think, well needed when it came to gameplay. And there's a weakness when it comes to Black Isle and Interplay Studios, and that's that they are great with story, but they didn't innovate. They didn't change things up as much as they should have. And I know some things, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but there, there does need to be an improvement over time. You do need to see differences within your games. It can't be the same game. It has to evolve, you can say. And with each Elder Scrolls game and with each new Fallout game, you can see they evolve unless they're a spinoff like 3 to New Vegas. And even New Vegas had some pretty decent improvements when it came to gameplay. Um, but Fallout 3, moving from Fallout 2 to Fallout 3, you notice that Bethesda had basically moved it into the three-dimensional plane. VATS was implemented in a completely different way. Instead of being the main targeting system that you would use to actually attack your enemies and target which body parts you want to hit, you could now pause combat in a three-dimensional plane while everything was happening live and there was no turn-based whatever. You could use AP and you could shoot. We all know Fallout. I don't know why I'm explaining it, but you get what I'm getting at. That was a new mechanic. Guns in general for new... They, they were just new for, for Bethesda. They had to make a whole new system for guns. It was really cool and I respect their efforts for it. Uh, and I think the story, I think, is the weakest part of Fallout 3. And, and by extension, Fallout 4. See, Fallout 3's story was probably its weakest its weakest link. I talk about this in what Bethesda gets wrong about the Fallout franchise video, so I won't get too much into it. But Fallout 3's weakness is indeed its story, as well as Fallout 4. And I guess by extension, Fallout 76 also failed narratively. I think it's gameplay, it's UI, it's gunplay and everything is just good. Its new creatures and its new mechanics when it comes to building are very well thought out. I just don't think that its story... I don't even know what the story of Fallout 76 is and I played it with my friends for like so long. I think the weakest part is the fact that there are no human NPCs. There's no settlements. And I don't care if we're supposed to be the, the new settlements doesn't work that way. You can't have players and you can't expect them to just get along all of a sudden. We know how Grand Theft Auto Online works and we know how all other major multiplayer on games that allow us to just kill each other as soon as we get into the world. We both know how those turn out. We've seen Rust and we've seen DayZ. They are the worst. I've been playing Red Dead Online and trust me, it is not a fun experience with some of these assholes. Part of my language. But, but the point is, Fallout 76 expected way too much from its players. They thought they could just get away with that. That's the weakest link with it. I don't think that that was the crutch of like, I guess you could say the Fallout franchise, because in previous games, the Fallout franchise has actually managed to pull off a pretty decent-ish story, but the story could have been so much better. And I think that, I don't know, I just don't think Fallout 76 performed well. And with a couple human NPCs and some actual settlements, some real vendors that actually gave you quests and stuff, rather than everything being a computer or a robot, I think it could have been so much better, but I don't know. I think that's why I think Fallout 76 is the weakest link. There's way more negatives than there is positives about the game, but at the end of the day, I didn't really regret my purchase. I just had a lot of nitpicks with it. Anyway, now that I've gotten out of the way what I think I like and what I dislike about the games, you can see I definitely have some issues with some of the Bethesda games, but at the end of the day, I don't think there's a bad Bethesda game, because despite all the issues that these games have, I still spend hundreds, if not thousands of hours in some of these games. Just getting invested in the story, the gameplay, I've spent so much time that I've never regretted my purchase.
even Fallout 76, with all its gripes that I, I just, I, I know, I know it's not that great of a game, but I don't think it's a terrible game compared to most people. I don't regret buying it, and therefore I don't think it's a terrible game. I think there's still opportunity, there's still potential, and that's one of the reasons. I, I've never had a real reason to hate Bethesda. I know there's a lot of controversy as of late with the Power Armor edition of the game, because there was some fiasco with a bunch of canvas bags, and I know, I'm, I'm a fan, I paid attention, I think it was dumb the way that the Bethesda PR person managed to reply, we have no plans of fixing this. I don't know who that guy was, I hope they never hire him, and I hope they freaking fired him, because that was the worst response you could ever give. It probably was outsourced by another company, but the point still stands. It was the worst response I have ever heard of. We have no plans of fixing that. Really? I feel for the people who bought the special Power Armor Edition, but I thought the whole thing about the Power Armor Edition was what you got the, the, the helmet. That was the only reason I almost spent $200 on it. I wanted the T-51 helmet. That was freaking awesome. <laughs> Look at Todd Howard. He even said something about it. But, like... I, I feel for people who were upset about the canvas bag because I thought the trash bag that you got for it basically was, was dumb, very cheap. You got basically turned around, but I don't think that's enough to make me be like, hey, I hate Bethesda now. They lied. They didn't. They gave you something. It might not have been something good. And at the end of the day, I mean, what I'm looking at is if they fixed their mistake or not, and they did, from what I can understand, they did send out new bags, so that situation is fixed, but I, I, I've just never had a personal experience where I've hated Bethesda. I know there's some dumb shit as of late they've done, but, like, the fifth time now I'm saying it, never had a reason to hate them. Closing this video out, I know I've been rambling, I guess, for a couple minutes, but this whole video was just me talking about Bethesda, what I thought, and I tried to keep it as on rails as I could without going too far off the path. I just wanted to point out that if you do not like stuff that Bethesda has done, or if you think I'm coming at you for all the people that have negative press on Bethesda, I think in today's day and age, the system that it should be when it comes to a developer with their game is that if something is not liked by the community, they should voice their opinion by not only telling them through social media, through reviews for the game, through the sales themselves, do not buy the game, or get a refund if you do not like the game. That is the best way to get a company's attention, to remind them, we did not like this, we do not like this, you let them know that so eventually they will <laughs> You know, get, uh, they will eventually hear it. I almost guarantee you in today's day and age, they will definitely eventually hear it. But I don't think we need to constantly be breathing down their throats, breathing down their necks, whatever the term is, reminding them that they made a terrible game. Because compared to some companies, Bethesda might be not the best, but they're not the worst. And I respect Bethesda for actually making games that have stuck with me for a long time and until they get to konami ea levels of nonsense i don't think i'm ever really going to go out of my way to trash talk them to not buy their games to act like i hate them and at the same time make all of my content surrounding their their games and their stories because let's be real here that is the dumbest thing i've seen some dumb people on youtube talk for 50 minutes about how Skyrim is terrible, talk about how these games are bad, how Bethesda is terrible, and I get it, but at the same time I just don't agree. Let's just agree to disagree, you have an opinion, I have an opinion. I'll let you think what you want, and I'll think what I want. If you were interested in my opinion today, this is the reason I made this video, because I knew people were interested, I had received comments before asking me to make this video. And I hope that my insight into why I like Bethesda and why I still respect them despite all the nonsense. Don't let don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna let them get away with nonsense. But I still respect them. I still like them and I still will buy their games if they're good. But that's the reason I made this video, and that's what I'm sticking with. 
Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I know I rambled on. I think I've gotten to the point. There's some more stuff I could talk about, but it would be a very long video, and I don't want to waste any more of your time. I might go into other topics relating to Bethesda and some of their practices. Like, I feel like I'm going to make a Creation Club video talking about how it's wasted potential. And I might talk about their VR ports. Because I think Bethesda has very interesting policy. It's very bad policy, in my opinion, when it comes to VR games. It's just weird. But yeah, I'll make a couple more videos on topics very similar to this in the near future. But for now, this has been Infinity, reminding you all to say it with me now. Eat well, play well, and indeed, live well, friends. I hope your day is good, and I hope you go out there and strive to break infinity.